the curtain here. Aether current, get in my belly. I missed it my first time through, but I saw in shout chat someone mentioning that there was an Aether current in here, so. Current gets in my belly, thank you. All right, how many are in this zone? Uh, so let's see. Aether currents. Number four. Fucking hell, there are so... There's a lot in this zone. Uh, yeah, this has the normal amounts. Now, Hades, turn around. We gotta go back this way. If you look on the previous zones, they've all been reduced to four. This one hasn't. To make it easier to unlock flying in them, I guess, but they still want it to be something you can spend a while doing for Endwalker zones, I guess. Content to complete. I'm Zinc to put your effort into. Well, I think with the Veiler, when I get a new zone, I always get all the currents I can first, and that's it. Artificially blocks me off by putting like a a castrum on a bridge in my way. <laughs> Stormblood. And we're not pointing any fingers here, Stormblood. <laughs> Still, in my opinion, the weakest of the expansions. Yep, yeah, it's not bad, but it definitely had its weak spots, mostly with pacing. Yeah, I mean. It picks up when you get to the Far East, it's just it is noticeable at the beginning where you just invade the wall and then you go to Rogger's Reach and they're having you pick vegetables off the ground. And just a story being split between those two regions in general kind of hinders it a bit. I don't mind that. I kind of do. It's just... It was just, it was just mainly be uh, replaying a I mean, trailer, honestly, but picking vegetables that got me, like, I don't, can't we be doing something more productive than picking up some rotting vegetables off the ground? I mean, honestly, just after we had our asses handed to us by Xenos, it just kind of went a little meh. Again, it's not bad. It is a yeah, good story. Not, it just pales story, in comparison to Heaven's compared, compared to Heaven's Ward and Shadowbringers, it was the weakest of the three. It, it was. It definitely it had a, it had a lot to live up to, is what it boils down to. But it did also it was... introduce our combat sexual best friend. Harden? Zenos. Oh. Yeah, the guy who's obsessed with us right now. Which is funny, playing as a Baylor when he's like, pathetic, who are you? No one cares about you. And now he's like, I love you, I want to kill you because I love you, I am the Sunderate of shit. That's the Dray, that's the Underray, that's it, that's the one. So, yeah, he doesn't okay. make a lick of sense to me. Like, he's, he a, want, he's, a he he's a sociopath who can only feel something when he's fighting and killing. That's the whole shtick with Xenos is that he, is, he had never found anyone who ever challenged him until us. And he's a total sociopath, a psychopath, and a nihilist to boot. So when he found us and we actually gave him a challenge, he finally experienced emotion for the first time, and now he's just chasing that high again. This is what it so boils down just, to. He was denied so death, just, and he's trying... So why not just come fight us again? Because, he, well, wants because he would lose. Be, and that he wants it to be a spectacle, you know? He, he wants to consume... So well, he, he wants to recreate... To consume... Yeah, he wants it to... Wants it to be of the same scale as it was when we fought Shinryu, only bigger and grander, so that his final contest will be something to uh, really, really be special to go out on. This whole plan. But anyway. he, he doesn't care about the rest of the world, he, he just wants to feel something, because he's a sociopath. <laughs> oh shit, that's right, I'm supposed to be doing voiceover. One second. Considering. Everyone seems to have made it through without incident. Nothing of consequence, at least. Cryle did actually trip if you talk to her. And mm -hmm. as promised, the tunnel has delivered us into the medial circuit. As I recall, this tier is where they keep a wide variety of samples for agricultural production. If, Aaronville, uh, if Aaronville's assumption holds true, that specimens are being collected in preparation for a great migration, then we should see evidence of such plans in this area's research projects. Let's follow the path to the nearest farming facility and see what we see. Kyle? <laughs> Alright. What? Ah, uh, just Kyle. Just insisting that it came out of nowhere, she didn't see that slide, it's not her fault. <laughs> I think our pride got wounded a bit. 
I'm being chased by living moss. Mika, help! No! Oh. That's us. Mika's abandoned me. Thanks for having my back, buddy. Really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Now I know where we are. This is Merial Agonomics. The disable text auto advance. Labyrinthus is host to a wide variety of vegetation, which allows us to conduct studies on cultivation methods utilized in foreign lands. And it is this facility which coordinates and oversees those efforts. <coughs> the fruits of their research go to feed their Labyrinthus colleagues. Or so I hear. Up in the produce crowd? All notable successes might make it to the Agora. It's so exotic you'd be hard pressed to guess their origin, let alone how they might taste. Indeed, mystery vegetables without a name, only a list of nutritional benefits scribbled on a card. <laughs> I see no gleaners hereabouts. These workers seem to s share the insane sense of urgency. It's possible they know something of the forum's plans and their underlying motivations. Worth looking into, wouldn't you say? Sure. Huh. See what you can coax from the workers. The rest of us will do the same, or can or uh, will do the same, or cast about for useful clues. Oh. Ah. Uh, I'll go. I'll call, I'll go. Yeah. Glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perhaps eating chicken nuggets while you're trying to do voices probably wasn't the brightest idea you've had. Shut up, I was hungry, it was lunchtime. Jump. Imagine Mika trying to form a lecture at an Omo and then she's eating chicken nuggets <laughs> while doing it. <laughs> it, would probably be, it would probably be more like shrimp tails, but anyway. Oh, hello there. We weren't expecting visitors. Not with use of the lift being restricted. How did you make it down here anyway? Okay. You climbed down an irritating mineshaft. Mineshaft, you say? <laughs> well, you're a much hardier soul than I. Under normal circumstances, I'd reward such tenacity with a guided tour of the fields. But I'm afraid the forum has us filling orders lists a mile long. Massive yet detailed requests that are all wagon loads of crop samples and hardly any time to put them together. When I first heard of this grand reorganization, I assumed we would be shuffling around old stock to make room for the new. Then came the orders for ridiculous quantities of seeds we've already thoroughly researched. Nothing strange, eh? I pressed for an explanation, and was met with vague assurances that all would be revealed in due course. Not the most satisfying answer. I wonder if they're planning on taking these workers with them when they jump ship. Probably not. Do I have all to be taken down below? Oh, more than I can carry and then some. That's why stock is not via the cargo lift. That has been earmarked for aerial transport. There's a stack of crates on the hill over there. God, I got out of that slope was a job and a half. And there's one right And the last part. Mammoths. Do you know Giggy? He doesn't know Giggy. What crops are we raising? Uh, what crops are we raising? Well, as you can see, this one is a variety of grape. Only, need, but only needs a good source of sunlight to grow, and the conditions here are nothing short of perfect. At least surprising, given that it's a native to a particular locale in the very place upon which Labyrinthos was modelled, a region in the south of Elizabeth. Most remarkable habitat diversity. Allowing for myriad flora and fauna to thrive. 
Chilly peaks in the north give way to swaths of temperate plains, which in turn transition into a hot, humid coastline. Such bountiful territory is ever contested, as you might expect. It's to be called Corvus before the Imperials renamed it Locus Amonis. Foreign Sof saw it not as a prize, however, but as a researcher's ideal environment, one whose climates we strove to recreate within the confines of Labyrinthos. It since provided a rich foundation for countless experiments and cultivation. These grapes look better further away, I'm gonna say that. Yeah. You know, it's... It's, them, it's MMO graphics. <laughs> there, there's only so much they can get away with. Fortunately for them, the Warrior of Light loves grapes, we know this. <laughs> where's, just where's the volcano? I need to complete this picture. Oh, this island is a volcano. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Let's summon Ifrit and beat it up. And we have Emmett narrating it, so I'm sure he's watching. Perfect authenticity. Sure. I'm sure he'd be thrilled right. repeating that event. Stacked boxes. The labels of these crates tell the story of their contents. Bundles of common seeds and saplings accompanied by sheaves of reports. This cutscene, I believe, is voiced. I see flowers. Hard to look away, isn't it? But they're more than pretty flowers. Heart blooms are attuned to ambient emotion. You don't seem convinced, but believe me, it's true. This ashen grey, for instance, it mirrors the anxiety and urgency of those working nearby as they rush to fulfill sudden orders. Intense feelings like those spur the petals to change colour. Bright glowing hues in the presence of joy. Dark, subdued shades for frustration or despair. Yet even with the collected wisdom of Charlian at our disposal, we've yet to identify the underlying principle of this empathic effect. And there are other mysteries besides. Although the flower is extraordinarily long-lived, its low reproductive rate has made it difficult to find younger populations growing in the wild. With too few sightings to map its distribution, and no closely related species to track, we've been unable to pinpoint its land of origin. And to further complicate matters, every culture, even dimly aware of its existence, has given it a different name and mythos. Our attempts to study it via the historical record have been an exercise in frustration. Why are these flowers relevant? As an avid botanist myself, I should one day like to unravel the heart bloom secrets. But I'm afraid other duties must take precedence. I will leave you to your thoughts. This was a very strange and cryptic conversation. Just a passionate guy waxing poetic about something he likes. They they focus on emotion reading flowers quite explicitly. I feel like that's going to be relevant somehow. It's a notorious theme. Have you learned aught of interest? They're moon flowers. A flower that reacts to one's feelings. Strange. I must say. I have never heard of such a thing. This is all very fascinating. 
But as it stands, we fail to gain any significant insight into the Forum's undertaking. Indeed. While there is certainly enough activity to support Erinville's supposition that her priority has been placed on improving food production, and fortunately for our investigation, these workers were never informed as to how their duties serve the master plan. <sighs> if only we could interrogate the forum members directly. Isn't that the entrance to the Ark here? Huh, here it is. Look, there. I think that's Erendil. A little difficult to tell from here, but, but I think you're right. He did say he was coming down to make his report. Erendil receives his orders from the Forum. Would it not follow, then, that the superior to whom he reports is a Forum member? Or at least a close associate? Do you mean to eavesdrop on their conversation? What of the risks? Ours alone to bear. We won't interfere with Erinville's work, nor will he be implicated as an accomplice. If you're not comfortable taking part, I can do this alone. Nay. I said myself that I wished to know Father's intentions. And no answers will be forthcoming should we simply ask nicely. We can apologize later, should it come to it. Right now, we need every crumb of information we can get our hands on. Consequences be damned. It might be best if you came along as well. In fact, we should all... Sounds like a plan. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> Quickly, Erinville is on the move. We need to get closer before we lose him. Guys, we got our worried look on our face. How many people well, yeah, have to tell other people what's going on? What's, what's up with the. Oh, by the way, Hyland's trying to talk to me. We could start a club. Hmm. No, I'm pretty sure that's just people with Echo. <laughs> Is Cryle still feeling unwell? I've never seen her so distracted. Keep an eye on her, but keep moving too. We cannot let our quarry slip away. Please, What do you say? Hmm. Erinville was headed w westwards, along the path outside the Archean. Come, we can still catch him! My horse's poor cloven hooves. I have a horse burp. Does that count? I wasn't talking about your horse, I was talking about mine. Oh, let's do a level 81 enemy area. Special. Anyways, are you two ready for perhaps the best part of this entire quest line, of this particular part of the quest line? Is that sarcasm or literal? A little bit of both, honestly. 
it's a stealth section. Why didn't we take you, Geary, with us? It's not a stealth section. Technically. Technically. Hold Thank a you. moment. I have an idea. <clears throat> Jed, everyone still has an idea. If memory serves, that colossal warlike structure is Logistic in Beta, one of Labyrinthos' climate control centers. It should have its own lifts, with which one could access the upper or lower tiers. I, if I were an agent of the Forum, it would make for a convenient meeting place. But even if we happen to find Erinville and the company of said agent, I cannot expect them to reveal issues of importance as we nonchalantly stroll past. Nay, we shall have to remain undetected. If only Grahatia and his vanish spell were here. Oh, but there are other ways of turning invisible. Pretty hop, my little toads! No, no, it's why. Goodness! Oh, Damn it. Why? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What? You, she has so much of Matoya in her. It's <laughs> Unaccustomed to transfiguration? Worry not. It will wear off with the passage of time. I feel insulted. <laughs> I... <laughs> I suggest you and your green companions hop along and catch up with Erinville. Did you feel the magics fading? Return to me and I will refresh the enchantment. Um, and what am I to do in the meantime? Wait here, with me. In your current state of mind, you'd be as likely to leap into the jaws of a predator as you would learn anything of note. Which reminds me. Where are the creatures hereabouts? In that form, you are essentially defenseless. You have changed into a toad. You must remain transfigured in order to progress with quest objectives. You will return from your transfigured status if you move too far away. Look to your map for the transfiguration's area of effect. Speak with Yustola to restore or prolong the transfiguration. Why? 30 minutes. Alphadeau. Alphadeau. Ribbit, ribbit? Ribbit, ribbit. 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 Alpha Toad and Alley Toad are now accompanying you. <laughs> Get that at your side and do Alpha all that Toad shit. and Alley Toad? Alpha Toad and Alley Toad. Uh, no, no. That's why this is the best part of this particular section of the quest line. <laughs> oh I feel God. like it's going to be words to count out. I feel like everyone's too afraid of her doing it again to interrogate to, you know, She's vent the frustration. She's to do this, hasn't she? <laughs> Probably. So, if I were to guess, Ishtola, yeah. Your, Ishtola, your Matoya is showing. Good. Was mine intent. I guarantee Matoya has done this to her at some point. Oh, a thousand oh. times! Hippity hoppity, my little toad. It lasts for half an hour, too. Oh my god. Hippity hoppity, please make this stoppity. Hippity hoppity, please make this stoppity. Hippity hoppity. So we need to go to the northern bridge. What's this one? Hoppity hip. Uh, I'm sure both is following us very confused. Well, that happens. Discuss, discuss your ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Discuss your surroundings, ribbit. <laughs> Why ribbit. is it having us discuss when all you can hear is ribbit? Because we're all the funny. Additionally, uh, fun fact this particular string of events. Features the first vo voiced line spoken by the Warrior of Light, not counting when Arbor talked through us. What? <laughs> You'll see what I mean. It's it just ribbit, ribbit. It's just a ribbit. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. oh no! Run! Leg it! Hop to it! Hop to it, lads! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Out of here. <laughs> Red alert! Toad under attack! Red alert! <laughs> Toad in distress! Brian protects me! Really in distress, help! <laughs> uh, that, that's, a, that's a little in reference. Is this voiced or. En enabling text auto advance because it's cutscene is voiced. Ribbit, ribbit. 
<laughs> I trust you will find your compensation to be more than satisfactory. We wish to make clear that we are pleased with the efficiency and thoroughness of your work. So much so that we have come bearing new tasks in need of your competent hand. Another lengthy list. If I may speak frankly, the cleaners have been pushed to the point of collapse by your unending demands. We are not familiars to be exploited. We are Charlie and scholars, and we deserve an explanation for this unseemly treatment. What warrants such urgency? In an age long past, Charlian was charged with a momentous duty. And now that word of the final days hangs heavy in the air, the time has come for us to fulfill that charge. I can say no more, but I promise you this. All will be revealed in due course. And when it has, you will understand that your toil was in service to the greatest good. Then I will do your bidding, for now. But unless you wish the cleaners to rise up in protest, I advise you to offer tangible improvements for our working conditions. Your promised revelation does nothing to address present circumstances. A fair point. Your concerns will be conveyed to the forum. In other words, we'll take under advisement. Why do I hear a heartbeat? Does he know? <laughs> Our spoken line. I hope How the hell did he know we were following him? You may consider my debt to you repaid in Wait a minute, I'll explain. While I do have my reservations about the forum. I want to believe that they have our best interests at heart. <clears throat> Which is why I'm reassured that you're busy sniffing out the truth of things. We can ill afford to place all our eggs in one basket, this master plan of theirs, without first understanding the risks involved. Wait! How did you know it was us? If you mean to impersonate the toad, <laughs> try studying the real thing. <laughs> and don't try to fool an expert. <laughs> He's got a point there. <laughs> he catches animals for a living, he would know what they act like. And we toads. were not acting like toads. We toads were watching intently. Yeah, and toads don't technically walk in groups. They don't walk in groups. They don't typically uh, ribbit I like, reading or I li spy on your I like to think the warrior of life said, Hi, I'm a toad. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I suppose we should have known a cleaner who specializes in animal procurement would not be so easily deceived. But he seemed inclined to put his trust in us all the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. More importantly, perhaps, we've discovered a new piece of the puzzle. This momentous duty the forum agent mentioned. Charlian has been called to action and the Telophoroi's declaration was the catalyst. Whatever charge it is they hope to fulfill, they deem it of sufficient import to disrupt all of Labyrinthos, not to mention ignore Eorzea's request for aid. What do you say? What do you say? There's a, uh, there's a That blue, looks like the forum. Yeah, blue quest mark has appeared. I'm guessing that's one of the ether currents. Maybe. Bye, bird. No, it's Elise. Bye, bird. Oh, we're off to four. But did it could warrant the direct involvement of the forum and the commitment of all its resources? 
Judging by what we just heard, none of the cleaners were offered any kind of explanation. At this point, it seems abundantly clear that we'll learn nothing new by pressing them further. We should head back to Stoll and Cryo for the moment, see what they think of this. Oh, southwest apparently there's a ether current real close by. It's uh I'll to double check again. Hundred yards southwest, so down here somewhere. Sixty eight. Oh, it's up there. Aha. Uh -huh. How we now how do we get up there? That's where we just were. <laughs> Son of a Midgard. Take me off. Son of a submariner! Tom, question. Hmm? Uh, have you. How far into the uh, family campaign have you listened? Uh. I'm not say on the recent episode that you posted to me. Is it three? Or four, something like that. They just gone across the sea to a new. So. All right, they just arrived in Besaid, right? That was a pretty chill session, all things considered. Aye. Oh, yeah, I haven't listened to the whole thing from top to bottom. I've been listening to, like, segments through. <clears throat> yeah, just what's going on. Yeah, been long videos. I missed the pirate encounter I had planned. Is that based on rolls? Yeah. You remember how uh, Drelena at one point mentioned that she stole Captain Bicky's knickers? Vaguely. I was gonna have the pirate be Captain Bicky looking to get back his knickers. <laughs> you can always say that for later. Yeah, I mean, they're going back out onto the waters for next session because they want to head to the city of Kruna on the Isle of Leia's Lawn. Hold on, I'm coming along in a second. I was unlocking uh, another zone for PXP. Ah, I'm bailing them out. Right. Fair enough. 26,280. Ah. All of this was once filled with magma. Toasty. <laughs> what you want to what you want to bet actually that this is the same island that Azem went out of his way to save because of the grapes. I was thinking that earlier when we were talking about the grapes before and how this is a volcano. I was like, what if this is the same place that we uh, went like the source's of version of it? Wow, well, I mean, the source is the original world. It's just right. the shards are the ones that are the copies. Mm -hmm. Just why everything rejoins to us and not the other way around, unless you do a menphilia and decide that her other counterpart gets to be in the control seat. Um, where are you going? I was too busy talking to you and I walked past you. <laughs> are you guys still I not waved here? at everything. I was thinking about grapes, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you guys coming or not? Shut up. Is all right, Ishtola, you have words for us. Your toast we have words for you. Welcome back. I trust you found Erinvale then? Interesting. I had a feeling you would learn something important, even if that something was simply a confirmation that no one knows much of anything. You should share this with Kryle, then discuss how we'd like to proceed. Assuming we find her back at the farm, she was still behaving oddly, so I bade her return and rest there. Perhaps not the best decision, in hindsight. Do you mind checking near those flowers she was so entranced by? The rest of us can survey the more distant areas, just in case she decided to wander. I didn't want to tell us a thing she could tell us. So up until this point, she hadn't actually talked to us in Seven's Ward. Yeah. I mean, there was that one deal at the end of Shadowbringers where she, we kind of saw her for a bit. Oh, that's the, that kind of looping message she has to anyone who gains the Echo. 
Feel. Feel. Thong. Feel. <laughs> but she really likes those words. The Mula speculated that that is her first command to the people she tempers to give them back free will. Alright, the crates so are So we are here. tempered. Maybe. That's a theory. We haven't gotten any confirmation, or if we have, I haven't gotten to it. Where are you going? I'm going back to the crates where Kryle was hanging out by the flowers. Where, where even is it? Yeah. Where's that thing? Up, uh, the, the... There it is. I'm being attacked. It's dead. Feel. <clears throat> Cryo. Oh, he's not going to get that. <laughs> For you, the spell will keep it from wilting. What? She said you would need it for the journey ahead. Will you speak with her now? I cannot hope to match Minfilia's clarity, of course, but... Going all Oracle of Light on us. Sort of a mother, more like, but you know. Thank you. Do not worry. She has lent me her body for only a moment. Just as I could not save the first from the flood of light, it has become arduous for me to interact with the physical world without assistance. Though I might converse with you for a time, the incorporeal form I assumed on the ship would be incapable of casting even the simplest enchantment. It is in the depths of the ethereal sea, the place to which all life returns, where my influence is greatest. After Menphilia's sacrifice on the first, it was to the sea here in the source, where I ferried her soul. I wish that gentle spirit to find rest in the world she loved so well. Her, and another who may yet have a part to play, though that will depend on you. Take the flower, walk free, for you are free. To go where you wish, to believe what you will. That bloom will be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. In darkness, seek joy, surrender not to sadness, and see beyond despair. Walk free and bear the light for others to follow. Together, raise it aloft and let it shine till the end, blinding and radiant. was all too brief. Already she seems so far away. Ah, my apologies if I startled you. Ever since we began our descent into Labyrinthos, I sensed another's will, straining to reach out. 
Even with my particular talents, though, I was unable to make a connection at first. So weak and tenuous it was. Once I took hold of that wispy thread, imagine my surprise to discover it was Heidelin herself. Needless to say, it seemed wise to learn what we could before letting go. Her answers were more cryptic than I would have liked. But at least she left us with a guide of sorts, that unusual flower. <laughs> yes, we are definitely making progress. You can't be serious. We've done uh -oh. nothing wrong. <clears throat> Great. So this is the scene where the piece of music drags on way too long. Oh, daddy's here. Master Fortuno, what business has the forum with us? Obstruction and suppression, apparently. Mistress Baldessian. Our records show you facilitated the Scion's entrance into Charlian by claiming them as assistants for your organization. We are aware of your investigations. After alerting the major institutions to the presence of potential troublemakers, we received word from an Archean custodian. A group operating under the auspices of the students, skulking about Labyrinthos and engaging in clandestine behavior. Clandestine? We may not have entered Charlie in a scions, but we did naught to conceal our identities. Our only purpose in this city is to seek the truth. I can think of no reason why our actions should warrant the Forum's intervention. It is not our way to discourage the pursuit of knowledge, but the timing of such pursuits must be considered, not to mention their potential impact. With the world in chaos, we, the true caretakers of wisdom, have committed ourselves to an undertaking that demands the utmost discretion. And we will not risk its success by turning a blind eye to disruptive foreign elements in our midst. What, then, is to be our fate? Will you put us on a ship back to Eorzea? The Forum will convene to examine your case. The results of said inquiry will determine your future in this city. As for your absent companion, he has already been detained. Uh, task. You can function. Gah! But why? Is reading a crime now, too? Reading is encouraged, celebrated even. Not, however, of the volumes shelved in the restricted section of the library. Graha did some be an eing. I thought Archons were allowed in the restricted section. There are some sections even they can't reach. Graha. That's the scene where even this star, the star still has secrets to, to tell. Silence. I'm assuming. One's best defense. I would advise against. I'll give you some privilege this course. Meets the end of my blade. That would be. That would only make things worse. The, I don't care. At least the pommel. This is not the place for debate. The I'll leave him a hand. You need to quench your bloodthirst there, buddy. I will leave him a hand, and the one I cut off, I will slap him with. <laughs> the true curators of wisdom. That was a... Hey. That was a statement. Ugh... <laughs> uh. Been Charlie and stance for centuries, so. Oh, hi, Graha. It's a very arid one. Uh. Cryo's home song. She took it off for this. 
Have we ever seen her with her hood down? If you've played Final Fantasy V, you have. Bam haircut. It's a slightly different color. I like her ponytail. Forgive me. I was careless. We would have been detained regardless. This way, at least, we managed to stay together. <laughs> I love that grin. I trust your time within the Forbidden Archives was well spent. The forum will come to order. This inquiry is now in session. As speaker elect, Master Fortuno, would you be so kind as to restate the matter which compelled you to summon your colleagues with such urgency? As you are all aware, we recently denied Eorzea's request for Charlian assistance. Since Interfere then, how? Certain exactly. individuals dissatisfied with our decision have taken it. They entered our nation masquerading as associates of the students of Baldessian. We are. Technically. But these malcontents are better known as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. These militants wield influence with both the Eorzean and Eastern alliances, and are inextricably involved with the crises presently afflicting the world at large. Loose in our city, these warmongers sought to meddle with and expose matters of state secret. What are they if not a dire threat to be exposed? Mm. I'm strangle him. You have tarnished the good name of the students. Gallup would be. I want to strangle anyone. Strangle that woman there. Gallup would be proud. Gallup Baldessian was never one to forsake his fellow man. Even if this nation closed every door and retreated from the world, he would have found a way to help the Scions, help every soul of this star. Fight back against the coming doom. A terrible enemy stands poised to lay waste to all we hold dear. In the face of such madness, Eorzea reached out to Charlian, a respected ally, in the hopes of forming a united front. Was your curt dismissal truly the best you could offer? Or are you so preoccupied with your momentous duty of an age long past that even the end of the world is unworthy of your attention? Whence came this revelation? From the mouth of a forum member within fortuitous earshot. Then it seems your findings support my own. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the forum's policy-making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent, the unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time, I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something... odd. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge.
The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravani economy. The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. Now, there is no question that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. The very same period when Charlian scholars in the hinterlands began a formal study of the ethereal sea. You found something, did you not? And whatever it was, gave rise to your oh-so-important duty. Mind your tongue, Archon. If you had seen... They can't physically talk about it. Yes. yes. We are bound by a duty we cannot ignore. <laughs> Knowing this, what would you have us do? Abandon our vital work and join you on the field of battle? We will never choose the way of the sword. We will fulfill our mission, not through strife and bloodshed, but survival. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we Scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath. Such misguided zeal. Father, I... Master Fortuna. I fail to understand the stance you have elected to take. But by the same token, I have yet to find a compelling argument to counter the challenge you put to us in Gradania. Still, in the midst of my uncertainty, I must trust in myself to do what is right. As others have chosen to trust in me. Arnold. So I will continue, as I always have, weighing the consequences of my every action and allowing my hope for the future to inform my decisions. Is that it, quickly speak, Brian? That's ah, quite thank enough. You. Have you all forgotten the reason for this assembly? Long cuts in, so I'm currently standing up and twirling around a thing. He's the head of the studium and an old friend of my grandfather's. Honestly, every discussion devolves into some interminable debate. Terrible habit. Let's return to the topic at hand. Mm. I like this guy, by the way. By their own admission, these scions have resolved to fight alongside the Eorzean nations against the doom which Swift approaches. But there exists no evidence of an attempt to incite our citizens to do the same. Furthermore, while our decision may well have been the correct one, we cannot simply bull our way through these disagreements without inviting doubts or objections. Put yourselves in their place. Who among you would leave a tome unopened if an elder forbid you read it with no reason given? Now, if we're to quell further discontent, then we must conclude this matter with a fair and even hand. 
He can live. <laughs> I'm a friend of Louis Suarez, huh? Master Montachain raises some valid points. Keeping such concerns in mind, I propose we enforce the following measures. Until further notice, the students of Baldessian are to cease any and all activities within the domain of Charlian. You will also refrain from any further investigation into the Forum's decisions and duties. Failure to comply with these restrictions will result in the immediate expulsion of your Scion Associates. Let us put this judgment to a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. It's a lot of no's. Count 51 for and 48 against. The proposal is passed. Students, Scions, you have heard the forum's judgment. Pray abide by it or face the consequences. That's it. Honored members, I thank you for your time. This inquiry is concluded. Well, hey, at least we're still in the city. Yeah, basically being put on house arrest. Well, we can still go about the city, we're just... We can't do anything. Still use it as a base of operations for our other we're shit. We're tourists. So, but yeah, so they saw something in the Ethereal Sea that scared them so much that for the last 200 years they were preparing to exit out of the planet. Like, the whole... The, uh, Javania was using tuition fees to fund the damn thing. So, yeah, they saw something that scared them. So, something to do with the final days, Zodiac, Cassians, etc., etc. It made them decide that the world was already beyond saving. Well, we just have to prove them wrong. We do the impossible all the time. <laughs> Alright, Nishtola! Say words to us. Well, at least we've been allowed to remain in the city. And our endless investigations have not been in vain. We now know that this mysterious duty of theirs began with whatever the Forum discovered in the Ethereal Sea. With our freedom so sorely curtailed, however, we will struggle to learn aught more of substance here in Charlian. Lizzie is next. The overall picture has grown clearer, yes, but that's in spite of the Forum being so maddeningly vague about this duty of theirs. Why are they so reluctant to explain their actions in plain words? Survival, come with me. Is father's work so vital that it takes precedence over his own family? And then, someone new shows in. It's oh, another... No. Alphano? Alize? It is you! Chameleons! When I heard you'd been dragged before the forum, I came as swiftly as I could. I'm so very glad they allowed you to stay. Mother? Oh, so it is mummy. Chameleons. Chameleons live here. At your service. And you fine people must be the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Lovely it is to finally meet you. Um... Night and day to dear old dad, huh? <laughs> Mother, please. We don't wish to make things difficult for you. It would wish his father that you were here. Oh, other than that. Am I to be chastised for speaking with my own children? 
I am well aware that you and Master Forshino are not on the best of terms at the moment, but I've been absolutely desperate to see my darlings again. You will come by the house, won't you? I have gifts waiting. New outfits. The timing couldn't be better. As matters stand, we shan't be going anywhere until we discuss matters with Thancred's group and reconsider our options. So, oh, visit your home. We will be back at the Annex when you are ready to rejoin us. I'm not sure we... What do you think? <gasps> the Warrior of Light? <laughs> what a splendid day this has turned out to be. Champion of Eorzea, I insist that you join us. Uh, uh -huh. she's, she's bubbly. <laughs> This is why we like chameleons. She's a good woman. <laughs> ah, but we must be quick about it. Not for my own benefit, but should my husband return and find you enjoying our hospitality, the servants will be made to suffer the consequences. She does not take her husband's shit, does she? <laughs> she does not. If you'd be so kind as to escort my children to the estate. She wears the pants. He just likes to think he does. <laughs> yeah, and he knows he can't punish her, so he just goes and punishes everybody else. Well, and then she was gone, and with her, any opportunity to protest. <laughs> Indeed. The matter is settled. Enjoy yourselves, you three. I think this is a nice change of pace. Yeah. <laughs> had it, enough of stuffy self righteous Daddy stuff. is going to show up, and Daddy's not going to be happy. I don't care what Daddy wants. Daddy's a dick. <laughs> Daddy is a dick. <laughs> I apologize. My mother is not one to take no for an answer. Still, I am glad. Relieved, even. To see her in such high spirits. What say you? It seems we shall have little enough time to enjoy it. Will you accompany us on our visit home? Of course. And what Alize says? Oh, fine. If we're going, then let's get it over with. But be sure to stay in the entrance hall. No peeking into our private chambers, thank you very much. I will find your diary. You can't stop me. <laughs> I have a knock. Your room has always been perfectly neat and tidy. Everyone has things they'd rather keep to themselves, don't they? Just mementos you can bring yourself to throw away, childhood toys. I, I mean, I, uh, never mind. The estate is that way, straight down the stairs. Come on. I am exploring everything. <laughs> uh. I mean, you know, for science. <laughs> Every single nook and cranny. <laughs> it shall all be yours. A dialogue spot. Alpha no first. When Alizé and I were little. This bridge was as far as we were permitted to wander alone. I say alone, but my mother or servant was always somewhere nearby, keeping a watchful eye. Now look at us, traveling to different continents, different worlds even. And Alize. Tell about that time you met a lavender book horse. <laughs> as children, Alphano and I would often wait here for our father to come home from work. It must have been a day when his meetings ran long. Because I remember growing restless and leaning out over the railing. Watch the water rush by. Father, of course, arrived at that exact moment. Came pounding down the path in a panic, crying out my name. Different times, huh? Why do we feel, really? why do we feel like this is where Alize gets her... Bits of her personality. And here you are at last. Please do come in. I believe the ne this next string of cutscenes is voiced. Welcome, Welcome home, home, my lady. lady. That's creepy. Wow. Would there be any more fancy? Fun fact, this isn't the fanciest thing I've seen. Isn't Mansions really over on the East Coast are fucking ridiculous. This is impressive. 
Do you call me? Nearly is. <laughs> what do we say? <laughs> Making fun of her in the middle one. I like it. <laughs> do we want to go with the middle one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, went, I went with the bottom one on my first run through. <laughs> sure, middle one this time. Yeah, in the middle. Sorry. Okay. I'll have you know I'm quite fond of the rising stones. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm quite fond of the rising stones. Lord Fortuno is not to hear of this visit. And I should also like the children to have their gifts, ere my husband makes his return. As you wish, my lady. Someone's sleeping on the couch nowadays. So that's where that outfit comes from. Master Alfno, Mistress Alice. If you'd accompany me upstairs... We have a little, like... We shall super prim and proper little butler boy girl, I don't know. The twins have been sending letters home from time to time, recounting their latest adventures. I am sure they withhold certain details, of course. Only to keep me from worrying. They tell you the point where they're actually two years older now. Yet a mother worries all the same. In the early days, especially, I tried to support them as best I could. Sending the Scions call... I'm sure they were both only there for a, a little under a year. Others, they was there for one. Half of them was there for two. Fortunately, they Recall them having the same amount of time by the Exarch's reckoning, but whatever. Time and time again. Their words grow more confident with every letter. Their depictions more vivid. Alpha and I went the same time as the triumphs um, and defeats, the joys and, and sorrows. Okay. It is clear that they have come to find value in every experience. But of those they treasure most, it would seem that meeting you might be the most impactful. Why, since that fateful day, I do believe there has not been a single missive in which you were not mentioned by name. A little brothers and sister, a little brother and sister, look up to us. It is plain they care for you, and I am glad they have such a steadfast companion watching over them. Under normal circumstances, I would offer you tea, but alas, these are anything but. In any event, why don't you keep me company whilst we await my children's return? Perhaps you might regale me with a tale or two of your exploits. About that time your son formed a grand company and then they tried to kill him. <laughs> that strikes me as a poor taste adventure I'm to recount. I'm waiting for for Shino to walk in. Yeah. Just the door just blasting open. It's like, what the hell are they doing in my house? Sup? <laughs> Sup? Yep, I'm hanging with your wife. Oh, the new outfits. When you mentioned gifts, I wasn't sure what to expect. Mother, I... Oh, look how... The tower's got a pow. And the style is to your liking. But Alizé was wanting progression. It's perfect. Exactly what I would have chosen. But please, tell me you had something different made for Alpha. <laughs> Naturally. You are hardly little children anymore. And while I shall miss dressing you in those precious matching outfits, I must respect the individuals you have grown to become. This is why we like chameleons. See for yourself. Is, uh... Surprisingly good mom, all things considered from what I'm seeing. Thank you for the splendid clothes, mother. Stylish, comfortable, and eminently practical. <laughs> Somewhere the Taru is sneezing, so feeling insulted. They are <laughs> missing one final touch. Or maybe challenged, or just happy that they have new outfits. All of the above. Another note though. If you'd allow me, Master Alpha. Ah, he's becoming a sage. Oh, is this the introduction of Sage? Yep. Wait. Are 
please. A sage's tools of the trade. They belong to your Steal family. them. <laughs> <laughs> Though he may as well be chained to his desk these days. As a student, he was often called upon to venture into the field. He wielded those armaments, both to heal and to harm in no few battles. None so fierce as those you two have braved, perhaps, but battles nonetheless. So much for him never drawing Thus blood. Thus did huh? I pull them out of storage, to show you that he was not always the man who stands in vehement opposition to you now. <laughs> and also because it would be a terrible waste of ridiculously expensive House Le Veilleur commissioned artistry. <laughs> a little wink. We like her. Yeah. Fortunately, maybe a giant dick, but I can definitely see why he fell in love with this woman. And the sage stone. Yeah. I am told Ball these stone. devices are quite difficult to master. For someone of your extent. This is the first time we've seen a character other than us being given a soul stone. And a flop. Yeah. It's out of the Blue Mage quest line with. Well, like a you thousand well. of the We don't count things. the Blue Mage, they're unique. <laughs> Try to find common ground with your Don't talk about Blue Mage. That you might come and go without need for this awful subterfuge. We will, Mother. I promise. My final gifts to you, before you run off, are an observation and a suggestion. Firstly, Fortuno has ever been a serious man, but it was only after you were born that he truly lost himself in his work. I may not know the forum's inner workings, but I know your father's. The timing of that change in him holds some significance. Secondly, do not seek to best your father with words. Far better that you simply show him. Let him discover the merit of your actions. After they cannot be undone. In other words, she just gave us permission to uh, sabotage him away. We shall take your wisdom to heart. Thank you again for these gifts, and farewell for now. Safe travels, my children. Eat well, stay warm, and keep your friends close. Our little Alfie has become a sage. It, and it is worth noting. It is clear Emilian still cares about Fortuna, so... Yeah. Yeah, but just, so, she also just doesn't seem to agree with his decisions of like... <laughs> she definitely doesn't agree, but she isn't getting livid with him, so we can assume that she's privy to more than we are. Either way, just, off and now. Just slyly giving her kids the means to prove him wrong. <laughs> Thank you for indulging Mother's request. I can see it meant a lot to her. And I uh, shall refrain from inquiring as to the content of your private conversation. Our visit was all too brief. She showed us for baby now, pictures. However, <laughs> for now, however, it will have to suffice. As will these tokens of home that we carry with us. It's gifts to help us remember who we are and whence we came. But enough sentimentality. Let us return to the Annex and rejoin our companions. Okay, this concludes the uh, Charlian segment of things. Indeed. Also, yeah, after this quest, I will have to say that we must cut the session. We really press for time. Like, Amanda gets off work, like, in the next 15 minutes. Uh, then probably we wouldn't have time to do it without uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. Alright. As it does have some small uh, in game demands of us immediately following our arrival, so. Alright. Well, let's just let's just talk with Kyle and then retreat to our in rooms for the night. Indeed. Alright. We're talking to Kyle. Yep. Box up. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Enjoyed your time with the Lavias, I hope. I would ask how the twins fared, but their new outfits tell the tale. I only hope we can help them to reconcile with their father. We might return home one day with their heads held high. In the meantime, get ever closer to the secret the Forum strives to hide. And that flower bequeathed to you by Heidelin is sure to guide us going forward. I'm confident that once you've scouted out the situation in Thavnir, we'll be well equipped to plot out our next move. Yeah, and Thavnir, that has the first dungeon, doesn't it? Power. Zot. Yeah, but we gotta actually finish up the uh, our stuff there first, then we come back to Charlian, and then we go back to Thavnir and do the dungeon then.